All right, it's time for another hieroglyph. This is probably one of the best known hieroglyphs in modern times, but what does it actually picture? And how was it used in ancient Egyptian? It's actually used in multiple different ways. That's what we'll get into in just a moment. Welcome to Voices of Ancient Egypt. If you're new here, I'd love it if you click subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss future videos like this one. All right, so what is this one? Well, the most common answer you'll hear is that this actually pictures a sandal strap. So basically the idea being the loop being the part that would go around the ankle and the long uh, string in the center going down would be the part that goes between the toes, kind of like on flip-flops, except with a little bit more structure. And one good reason to think that this may be the correct interpretation is that this word, onk, which you probably have seen before, not only means what you probably know it as, which is life, but also can spell the word for sandal strap, which is also ankh in ancient Egyptian. So it may derive from that, just like the sign that we pronounce pear is a picture of a house and it can be the word for house, but you can also use the sounds from pear to write other words. So it could be this with sandal strap and then by extension has the same consonants as life and so is used to write that as well. Now, another, there are other interpretations, though, as well. Some of the early depictions of onks show them looking more like knotted cloth um, and thicker, not really like a sandal strap, so it's possible it may actually be something else. In any case, it is used for multiple different words, not just the most common one that's known today, which are words related to life. In addition to sandal strap, it's also the word for mirror, probably also a play on the fact that you're reflecting the person in it and that this has some relation to the idea of life. And it's also a um, name for a particular type of floral bouquet, especially that was given to the dead during the beautiful feasts of the valley. This is a annual festival in the area of ancient Thebes. Now, this could be written uh, when you're talking about the most common use that we're familiar with, which are words related to life. It could be written just with the one sign by itself, or it can also often have what we call phonetic complements after it, where it sort of repeats the N and the third H sounds written out separately, but we don't pronounce them extra. It's just complementing the onk sign. Now, one of the most common places that you'll see this word, onk, which in addition to meaning life, the noun life can also then be, you know, all the other sort of parts of speech, verbs, adjectives, and so forth, sometimes with additional endings. And one of the most common places you will see this used, can you guess? Ding, 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 you guessed it, the offering formula. We've been talking about the offering formula so much lately, I imagine you probably could have saw that one coming. Um, now, it's not always included in the offering formula, but oftentimes it is at the end of the list of offerings. We've been talking about a lot of offerings lately, so this sort of rounds out the end of our list. Oftentimes where you'll see this is at the end where it will say in Egyptian, uh, Chet, Nebet, Neferet, Wabet, Anket, Necher, Yim. And this means everything good and pure which the God lives on. So this is basically like a catch-all kind of phrase for offerings so that you can be including everything good that you'd want in your afterlife without necessarily having to have remembered and have the space for naming every single possible offering you might want in the list. This kind of gives you an all-inclusive ending to that offering list. I'll see you in the next video.